to that. All right, we'll call the order the regular city council meeting for <coughs> Monday, May 8th. Start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. This is for all. Thank you. <coughs> Any corrections to the agenda? We don't have any corrections to the agenda. Um, I have a slight change to the lease agreement after discussion with Chad Anderson earlier today that I'll go over when we get to it. Um, and um, I just also want to note for the record that Council Member Arvisu is, is on video from Ohio um, and is present tonight, even though she's not in the room. Okay. Moving on. Move to we have the agenda. Second that. A first and second. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, is there somebody here from the public that would like to talk about something that is not on the agenda? Is the park, that would be the probably. park is on the agenda. Okay. If you're here for the community group, but it's not. Okay. Yeah, the community it's, group. It's on there. Well, it is kind of. Both on there. Yeah, on okay, there. so we'll do that when we get there. All right, David. I'll make a motion to approve the April 24th council minutes, approve municipal accounts payable and payroll without breakthrough beverage, and then approve resolution 2023-40, approve a donation for the Central Park improvements. Uh, first and second, any further discussion? Roll call, please. Landite. Aye. Arvisa. <coughs> yes. yes. Teets. Aye. Schmidt. Yes. Dobson. Aye. Schultz. Aye. Mayor Carmen. Aye. I'll make a motion to approve accounts payable for breakthrough beverage. I'll second. Uh, first and second, any discussion on that one? Roll call, please. Arvisa. Yes. yes. Schmidt. Yes. Dobson. Yes. Schultz. Aye. Landite. Aye. Mayor Cormack. Aye. So we have on the Mayor Council communication, I asked to put this on there so I'd remember to talk about the work group that wanted to request a meeting with us soon. So do you guys want to say anything? I can't hear it. Oh, do you want to? I said it. Did you guys want to say anything before we talk about now that? Now it's time. Uh, I just wanted to see if we could. <laughs> yeah, please. Thank you. Thank just you. so we can hear you. Yeah. Um, I just wanted uh, to set up a meeting with the council with our workforce group. We haven't met for six months. And so that we can talk about all we've done and um, and just have just a nice discussion because I think it's time that we did that. And so I'm here to see if we could set up a date. And that's why I wanted to be on the agenda because we kind of talked about when it would work for us, not that it will work for you at that time, but I have a couple of dates and I'm just wondering if it'll work for you. Okay. What are those? Um, actually, the 18th or the 25th would be the best times. Of July or? Uh, no. <laughs> of May. Of May. Oh, May. Yeah. And then if that doesn't work, the 17th or the 24th. On the 17th is Burgers and Bands. And so that goes, I think, until 6.30. And then uh, on the 24th, there's a foundation meeting and they don't normally last. They start at 5.30 and last until about 6.30. I so I know, you, I know you like to meet at least by 6.30 or so. Anyway, that's what you did before. For me anyway, the 17th and the 24th don't work. The 17th? Yeah. Well, the 17th could, the 24th doesn't. The 18th does for you? The 17th, 18th, and the 25th does. Oh, no, not the 25th. Oh. oh. 
So the 18th would work for you, Mayor? The 18th would work for me as well. Okay. Can I just ask a, a question? We had said we were going to meet in June to kind of coincide with budget and everything. Is You didn't want to wait till June to... Well, the reason I didn't want to wait until June or we didn't want to wait until June is there may be some things we would want to talk about regarding your budget. You know, uh, we kind of like to talk about planning I had now because we have uh, a little over 700000 raised. So... We would like, I think it's time we started doing some planning, and so some of that might involve budget. And, you know, because doesn't this money belong to the city, the 700000 mm -hmm. So I, we would like to be included on the budget because it's going to affect the building. Just kind of curious what the thought process was. Yeah, and that's what it is. I don't, I think it would be good to get together, but I don't know that we're, we're ready yet to move ahead with a lot of planning. Thing, but I mean, we can really start talking about it. But I think we were going to wait until June to see what the total amount was and then, you know, revisit the whole process. So I, I mean, well, the, the 18th is not going to be a, a meeting that any decisions or anything. No, will be no, it's, it's more just going to be just for discussion and same. kind of see how we can move forward from this point. Because you had said June, but now it's approaching June, and we'd like to get in on on um, on the budget part of things for the city of Tracy because now we're we're part of that. So. Well, I, I guess I think that's a good idea, and I don't know, do we have to sit back and wait for every last penny to start maybe getting some designs drawn up, nailed well, down and exactly, exactly where it's going to go? That's exactly what we need to discuss. I mean, <clears throat> well, that's a, bigger, that's a bigger question of, you know, that I think needs to be examined, but, I mean, we set an amount, but that amount was a guesstimate at best. So whether that amount is even sufficient is, is a part of this whole discussion. How much is going to how much is going to be the cost? And without those plan specs we can't really know that. So we need to can't just keep sitting back, wait, wait, wait. We need to plan a little bit and look into the to what it might really just cost. And and our group is willing to continue with the fundraising. It's not going to just stop. But I think it's time if we're going to if we're going to get this done. I mean, you know, all that, all the plans and the contractors and putting out the bids and all that stuff takes us quite a bit of time. So I think it's I think it's time I think it's time we started at least thinking about it. You know, I mean, it'll have to be a discussion. Well, I was just wondering, when is it that we find out about that grant for the plans? Yeah, so there's, there's, uh, we've tentatively been given a, a grant, although I don't know the amount uh, for some design. I'm supposed to know by the end of the month for sure. I think maybe the 23rd. Um, so I don't know for sure that I'll know on that by the 18th. The other thing we won't know by the 18th is what local government aid is going to look like. You know, there's a lot of discussion at the state legislature about adding money to local government aid, and that would be good for us. I won't know that information yet either. I guess not knowing the local government aid by this meeting doesn't give me heartburn because yeah. I don't view this meeting that we're talking about in May is going to be where we commit any money right. or anything right. like if, that. If you don't commit it's any just money, then it doesn't get us to matter. kind of be okay. Where are we at? We're all on the same we page. Haven't, we haven't met for six well, months. Well, that's I think not, it's a good idea. you have been keeping us informed, so it's not as if we have not met. We've not met as a planning group, but you have no. been here and we have been staying in tune and, and watching the 
barometer and understanding and talking about it. So I don't want to, I don't want individuals that are listening in to think that we haven't been involved. In oh, no, time. I didn't intend for it. No. no, I didn't think you did, but no. I just want to make sure that, you know, that think we it's now it's meeting going to work for you here, May. Uh, I'll make it work somehow. It, when you say the 18th, um, does that work for the city council to have that meeting, to have a discussion? Sounds like it. Sounds like it's a yes, generally. Um, yeah. where, where, when do you want to meet? Uh, what time on the 18th? The later the better, but... Well, I was going to say, what works for you? 6 or 6.30 is... Or even 8. <laughs> <laughs> That's after my bedtime. Sorry. No, as, late as, as late as everybody's comfortable making it, I'll make it work. Yeah. Okay, are there any other events on... The 18th, that we know of. Jeff's checking his social calendar. Anything you know of? I'm not aware of anything. This, hmm? this, this is the IRB, so I am uh, usually, usually working, working Thursday evenings. Okay, so the Jan's got a conflict. Can you call in sick? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, now that it's been... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, 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 I don't know how long well that will go over. Yes. Can you go in when the meeting's over? Or is that too late for you? Because I'm oh, sure it's well, not going to last see, more than... What, what I, I do, do on Thursday, Thursday evenings is right after, after they, they have their evening meal, meal like with the sausage. Yeah. Well, can yeah. I sign up? <laughs> well, we may not have every, everyone at every single Yeah, and, and, and if you have to work, Jan, you have to work. More of a planning, information gathering. Right, so like... Catching up, I think. 6.30 okay with all you guys? Seven's okay with Is seven, how's that work for you, Jer? Would seven be easier, Jan? I'm usually... Finishing, Finishing up, up on massages, massages, but then starting, starting my documentation. Would anybody be available at, say, 5 o'clock? No. Would that be too early? That's too early. Okay. How about on the 17th? Does that work for everyone? You said that was burger. It's the burgers and band, there's, there's but they'd be done by 6.30. No, I don't want to. There's way too much going on. Yeah. You have to help with that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we all probably should be there. Okay. <coughs> Let's just do the you guys. It's, it's, Jan, if you don't, if you can't make it, Jan, that's okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. I, I, I can check, check if, if I can get off, uh, but I, 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 I don't know when I'm out here. here. Okay. Okay. Is seven okay for you? Seven o'clock, eighteen. Okay. okay. All right. Let's do it in the library basement if Is that's that okay all right. I think that's a good location. Guys? Seven o'clock. Seven o'clock. Eighteen. Eighteen. Sounds good. Next Thursday. To publish it. Is that enough to publish it? <laughs> so you, yeah, right. enough to publish. you said you got a little over seven hundred thousand. Is that like seven hundred one thousand or seven hundred eight thousand dollars gathered up? Um. I'm just curious. Stakes. That's counting pledges too, though. It's correct? counting pledges. Okay. Yeah. I guess we have at least that much, yes. Okay. We, we could certainly, George, make sure we have a, we as can, specific a number as we can possibly get, yeah. you know, by the 18th, I think. I've I think got we pretty much a specific yeah. number, but I hate to say it without. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It just. I know it's over 700. Yeah. In, in my mind, it helped me look forward a little more. You know, maybe we can get some designs drawn, <coughs> get something moving, even if it ain't everything. This, get started we well that's why we we want to have a discussion and see okay what we can do and we just didn't feel that yeah. the console is the place to do yeah. that we've so. got that so. we won't be doing anything yet get some motion going okay 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 so we'll seven all right o'clock next thursday then we'll see you guys all right thank you so much thank you janine thank mm -hmm. you you're janine. welcome don't be late becky <laughs> Okay, next on our agenda is... Uh, you should also, if you want to publish your information or whatever, the hospital's picnic on Thursday evening. Oh yeah, Jerry, tell everybody about that. The, 
Thursday evenings starting at 4.30 is our community picnic out at the hospital that we have every year as a thank you to the community for supporting us and everything. So everyone's invited out there. Helicopter will be there, ambulance, fire. <clears throat> um, little kid zoo. Yep, little kid zoo. Popcorn. I'm not sure if we have popcorn or not this year. We have to work on that. Yeah. 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 And so then everyone uh, come on out. Uh, is it the 20th for citywide cleanup? Yep, that's yes. a Saturday. Yep, 20th citywide cleanup. Yeah, citywide cleanup on May 20th for the everybody out there in TV land. Okay, we're going to move on to the discussion about the park property. That's where. So, would somebody like to talk about that from the. You might want to call on Jan since so she's the one that wanted yeah, to bring Jan, it up. Jan, do you have anything special you want to bring up about that? Well, well yes, yeah, I, I have, have a few notes. notes. Um, first, first of all, I, I, I want to apologize, apologize because, because I really, really didn't, didn't know, know that I had, had uh, was very well prepared, prepared with uh, asking, asking questions, questions and that sort of thing. thing. And, and so, so I, I made, made a vote, vote and, and really didn't feel I had enough information. So, so I, I had started, started, I started, I started getting phone calls, calls out here in Ohio regarding this, and I think the neighborhood felt kind of shocked that we had, we had voted, voted on this and, and no one had even mentioned them that this, this was on our, our agenda. agenda. So, so uh, I am I not, not against developing one or two lots, lots but, but very truthfully, I would need to see the park and I will be back and available on Wednesday afternoon and I would like to be able to know the dimensions of proposed lots, but I think there's we, we need, need to, to come, come up, up with a win-win win here. I, I'm, I'm not going to, I'm I'm not going to say that, that I would vote for it. We've, We've already, already voted, voted for it, so, so I don't know if we have to rescind what, what we voted, voted on. on. Um, but but what, what I feel is, is if we're going to have, have a lot for sale, it should be for sale. sale. Not that we have to vote again and what if some of us say, no, I don't want that lot sold, so then we jerk that out from under somebody. I think, I think when, when we, we do, do this, this, we really need to make a decision, decision yes or no, but based on fact. fact. And, and I would I have, have to see how that, that would affect the rest of the playground. playground. Uh, but, but I am open to that. that. Um, and, and I'm, I'm hoping, hoping that, that we can bring um, enough, enough information that maybe the neighborhood would look at it in a different way. I have talked to several people. One was Barb Johnson. She had some, some wonderful ideas about uh, future, future development, development for the park, park and it would be exceedingly expensive. expensive. But my feeling is if we would sell a lot or two out there, number, number one, one, I don't, I don't want, want it to be a giveaway, giveaway you know, that, that we practically hand it to someone for nothing or a little or nothing. nothing. I, think I think we need to have a minimum amount but, but I, don't I don't think that's, that's proper to discuss, discuss that at an open meeting. meeting. I'm, I'm just saying, saying I would be against a giveaway type thing. thing. And, and then, then that, that sale, sale of the money is supposed to go back into the park, but, but that, that is, is not defined. Is, is, is it this park or, or just in the general park fund? fund. Um, I believe I if there's a sale of any lot or lots out there, that it should be devoted to that particular park. And, and some, some of the of things that Barb Johnson, Johnson mentioned, mentioned was uh, she has seen people even come and set up their own volleyball nets. nets. So, so I think uh, a sand volleyball court, court which, which I don't believe would be extremely expensive, expensive. I think Gary gave, gave me just a rough quote of maybe around $3,000. Uh, Barb, Barb said there's really no shade out there, and, and I know out at the Caboose little park that we have, they do have a small picnic shelter. And, and that, that would at least allow some shade in the area. area. Again, Again, these are only ideas because, because I haven't really seen any dimensions to know what we could put on. on. We, we do, do have, have to be very careful and aware that, that there is a drainage situation, situation where in the spring, spring and Chris and Cameron, Cameron mentioned that it's for about a week, almost every spring, spring there, there is a lot of inflow of water and it goes through a culvert under the street, but it creates a very powerful, powerful current. 
So that, that is land that cannot be used, used for anything but drainage. And, and uh, let's, let's see. see. I, I do feel, feel that, that if we were, were to have, have one or two lots there, there we, we would have, have to make sure we had some, some sort of access to the park along that street. And can you tell me, anybody, what that street is that's on the... It's Adams. 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 Okay. Because... We either, either have, have people, people walking across, across people's property, or as we do at the swim pool, I think we have a couple of access points where there's a pathway that is provided so people aren't on private property. My concern is where those lots come within the uh, playground structure. Uh, because if you have kids on a playground, and it's butted up right next to the lot, the back of the lots, uh, very, very likely, likely there'll be a little, little trespass, trespass there, there and, and I don't, don't know if people will really like, like that. that. Kids, Kids, you know, playing on the playground equipment, wandering into people's, people's backyards. backyards. That's, That's something, something we'd have, have to think about. about. And, um, hmm, hmm. Am, I am I getting close, getting close to the end of all my notes? notes. Thank, Thank you for your patience. Uh, and we have actually a number of people from the community, so you may, oh, you may be actually saying some of the things that they would like to say. All right. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, before we turn it over to the public, and correct me if I'm wrong, but this wasn't a decision to actually sell a lot. It was just a decision to talk about possible that's, that's, lots. That's correct. I mean, essentially, essentially all the council decided was to, you know, look at the idea of selling some park land in uh, the pool park, and Sebastian Park, and, and Greenwood Park. It doesn't set any specific lots or any locations or what you would do with the money. And in fact, it actually specifically asked if the park board, the park commission would look at options for how we might spend the money. I mean, I think those are all really good questions. So in reality, all you did was just kind of adopt this conceptual resolution that says we want to look at this and that's it. Um, and so all of those things that are described, like where would the lots be, how big would they would be, stuff like that, that's something that we would have to, to flesh out uh, moving forward. Those are all really good questions. And we'd also like to let the public know that we would never sell a lot without having a public hearing first. Right. So with that being said, would any of you like to talk, come up to the podium and talk about anything? Yes, I, I would. I'm Larry LaVoy, a um, little bit about me. I built my house out there. I am exactly one block away on Adams Street in 1974. Uh, I have not lived in that house 100% of the time, but all but about probably three years or four years. I have lived in that house. I've owned that house. And my kids have played at that park um, before you go further, I think really it would be very helpful to the council to go out there, walk the lot. Um, I can speak of the water issues. Living there, I have literally went around, tried to keep things open. I've had my property flooded. I've had a shed on my property flooded. Um, it is not just in the spring when we got that big rain a few years ago, that was flooded very badly. That whole area was flooded really badly. Um, I, the one question I have, and I'm really frustrated by the lack of information that I've been able to get, is w exactly what size do you consider a lot? I can partially answer that question. The code requires an, an R1 zoning district which is this is is that it be a minimum 10,000 square foot lot um, and my belief based on a conversation that I was having with Shane is that there might be some minimum frontages as well Shane are you listening to this conversation yeah. <clears throat> I'm just trying to find the details but yeah I think there may be some minimum frontage on the on the front as well but I know it has to be at least 10,000 square feet in order to meet the minimum standards for R1 in the code so, so is that 100 foot by 100 foot? Or yeah, roughly. I mean, it, you know, roughly. It's going to be, yeah, something like that. I mean, it, you know, when we, when we kind of did an aerial of it, 
you know, there's about 20,000 square feet there, roughly 22,000. So, on the east but side? but given given on the east side, of Adams, given mm -hmm. you know that we didn't actually survey it or map it out, I can't say for sure. You know whether there's two. I don't think that there's three, but there's one or two there potentially. But this is the kind of thing that needs to be discussed, and we we haven't gotten there yet because this was just a conceptual conversation, not just about Greenwood, but also about you know Sebastian too, and that's another one, the same same discussion we have to have. 100 feet. 100 feet? So, so it's 100 feet in frontage. So, yeah, you'd be looking at 100 feet times 100 feet, roughly, you know? So, we had talked about, I know I questioned about um, if we could get some flags or something yep. out there. We could because do that. Because I am a visual person. I mean, I yep. drove by it before the meeting, and in my mind, I'm like, yeah, I think we could fit two lots there. Yep. But if we had the flags so everybody can go look and see flags and paint so people don't just yep. move flags. Yeah, I think I think we could do that. I mean, I, I'm sure that Shane and I could go out there and um, and, and kind of figure out where 100 feet by 100 feet would be. And I think, well, I you think know, you can use I, that wheel thing. That wheel thing, yeah. Well, we could I do that. Just from my building background, I think 100 feet wide is more than enough but 100 feet deep with certain types of structures you know more and more individuals are building with their their garage out front so you got a minimum lot frontage you know for the front part of whatever that house will be and then the rest of the house and so i'm not sure whether 100 would be sufficient it might be nice to mark at least 100 but then to know that one lot may need to be 100 or 20. 120 so it's got to be a hundred well if it's 100 by 120 then how come it has a hundred ten thousand square feet because that's twelve thousand minimum and then if it's, it's platted after 68 it's got to comply with this okay, okay. More sense. here's here's what i would say about that well uh, there, these were the details that we had yet to work out and what your resolution did was basically give us policy direction to work out the details that's it um, and so, and so we, we certainly can mark off some lots and stuff like that there, what it, what it might look like so that people can, you know, chop around out there on the grass if they want. I think that would be yep. helpful for the people that live yep. out there. We'll do that. I think we can get that done this week, I'm sure. So, Larry, the biggest concern that you might have is the kids won't have a playground to go to? Well, the, the biggest, the house yes, the, the biggest concern is the only decent area for a like a playground, play tag, play kickball, play anything on the east side. The other side is not really suitable a lot of the time for kids. And the reason it's not suitable, I want to make this clear, is because we have a county ditch tile that goes from Greenwood Avenue down to the north to towards the railroad tracks, but Prior to that, it, it doesn't exist. So there's an open ditch there. Floods, uh, the whole alley floods because the tile was put in wrong. They've, they've got the tile running like this and the inlet at my place goes like this. Well, when you got water going this way and there's a Y, you're gonna get a lot of water coming out of there when it's full. And so you got water coming up the inlet instead of down the inlet, flooding the alley. At the other end, it sucks like crazy because it's that same direction. But in the meantime, that's all flooded. It's backed up in there and the ground is not level and stuff. It, it, the whole area out there from the tornado suffered a lot of trauma. I mean, I built my house I literally took a pickup with an eight-foot box and a wooden box this high above of debris off my lot. That was, um, I'd say, cubic yards wise, probably four cubic yards, which on a dump truck, that's, yeah. that's quite a bit of stuff. I, um, I, I get what you're saying, I guess. Yeah, on and the side the where decent, the water runs. Right, on the, other the side, decent the side where kids anymore. are gonna play is where you want to put houses and there we need 
things like a shelter, bathrooms, things like that, which we've never gotten much out there. We got one grant in 44 uh, years, one grant to put in some street, streets, made streets. Other than that, we just haven't gotten improvements much. We got one piece of playground equipment, lost our big slide, um, and... What, what are you seeing for improvements that you would like to have? Uh, a shelter, okay. volleyball, and an area where they can play kickball, uh, tag, stuff like that. And really, the other side of the park, if that was, if that big culvert or tile was extended back and it was blocked off so water didn't come through there, that could be developed. And it could be a playground, could be a lot of stuff. The east side is also closer for kids. Um, there's a lot of land out there that can be developed. Uh, across from, uh, well, from Gale Autos all the way down to where Mary Hoffman lived, that on the south side, Jeff Farber owns it, but there's it's just garden. There's houses there. On the other side of the road, there's probably eight, nine acres that are back yeah, we're, in there and could be developed. Them get developed, you're going to need a decent park there. Now you don't have a decent park. The thing is, Larry, right now what we are looking at is just some options for some development right. for a couple houses of land that we already own because right now we cannot stress the or stretch the taxes of the people in Tracy to buy land and to get another housing development right down the road we'd love to do that but that's going to tax everybody in the city more and I think we've heard loud and clear people don't want their taxes to continue to go up so right now we cannot go out and buy people's property so that's why we have to focus on the property we already own right and but you but but how many acres let me answer you how many acres of land does the city own that could be converted to housing right now what we're looking at is the land that we own that already has the infrastructure well, Not, you've got, you, are you aware of Front Street in Broad Acres? Yes, we are, but that it, doesn't have all the the infrastructure there. What what infrastructure doesn't it have? I don't think it has the sewer and everything. There's, there's there. sewer along Let me ask the question. There's, there's, there's water and sewer main along Front Street. There's yeah. a couple problems that need to be addressed with that particular location. One is, is the road is very poor. Um, and that's because there's no road base on it. It was originally gravel and then just, you know, asphalt put over the top of it and so that's why it continually fails and fell in the flood and you know we're doing the best we can with that but that's what it is but we would still the, have money that we would the, have the big, to invest the, in roads the bigger out. issue the bigger issue yes is two things one is those roads that you just described but the second big issue is storm drainage because that is just basically one big marsh and flood and you could you could have seen it you know a week or so ago and so there really needs to be storm drainage infrastructure which is what the stormwater plan that we did uh, about a year and a half ago that was presented to the council by ISG shows. There needs to be some storm drainage infrastructure put in there. Otherwise, whatever you put on there is going to flood. And we don't want that. We don't want to put houses out there that are just going to flood. So that site could potentially be developed for houses, but it has some infrastructure that needs to be put into it. Um, okay. There's also drainage and Greenwood on Adams Street, on that park. When you build a house there, that house is going to have to be built up so there's going to be more water forced out onto the street. There's no storm sewers there. Yep. So the water has to come down the street to Greenwood. Greenwood is in bad shape, really bad shape. That's pretty much about as bad as Front Street there and then it goes to that tile which floods so that would only make it now the water doesn't typically run off the park but if you build it up it's going to run off and create more problems 
for people like me. Uh, but it, the biggest thing is, once you take that away, you've never, you're never going to have it back. It's a mile to a park. You've got, you literally have Warner Park and Sebastian Park, and they're what? A block apart if you walk across? Well, they were all at one time, all one great big park. So yes. It's not like we added. No, no, I'm just city, saying they you. Developed too. They were always there. Right, but and I'm just saying you have that there. And we with, developed blocks on all of it. You have? Yes. So Warner Park's going away? No, but we developed lots all the way up to Warner Park. Right, but there I'm is, just there saying. There's a house sitting on the ball field that I used to play ball on. Right, but you've got two big ball fields that are open. But what I'm saying is we have done this before. This is not the first time we've ever taken a look at this. And because there are other parks, you know, that's the, the issue well, that I have. Would you have any trouble us building on either of those two parks? On which two? Either of them. Which, well, which Sebastian. Or Sebastian. Okay, Sebastian. that's what I'm asking. Okay, thank you. I prefer you don't because we have so much undeveloped land, land that the city owns. And you know what, you're going to sell a lot. What, what's the lot going to sell for? 25,000, 30,000? Somebody give me a number, a rough number. We'll just That's say part of what we're looking at. Okay, but just, just a. Gave the just, we'll just give you a number does not, 25. The amount that we would sell it for is not the issue. The issue is we need buildable lots for houses right now. Everything points to the fact that if you want more in diversified retail, we're going to have to have more population. People are wanting to move here. We've lost several very, very good potential families because there was nothing to buy and no place that they wanted to build. And so right. that's a number one right now is just to find, and this was an idea that was... Yes, I understand it that. It wasn't completely all fleshed out. This kind of, I think, to me, the biggest situation that I would like to apologize to you and to the other residents is I think it taught us a valuable lesson that before we move forward, we should take some temperature. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to say that that's going to deter us from doing the right thing, even if individuals are not happy about it, but it would be nice to have notified you so that you didn't find out in a paper. I don't think that was well, good. And I, I apologize, that's not the right way that we should go forward. You know, I see this map here, and I've downloaded that map. The area you're talking about, I went out and measured it with a tape measure. I have a long tape measure. It's roughly about 125 feet deep, uh, and that's right to the playground, and 180 feet, 185 feet wide. Um, and but you cannot build right on that right away line. I believe you have to be back. From yeah. the, Shane, can you tell me how, how far back from the right-of-way line you have to be to build? Is it 10 feet? 25? So if you've got a 100-foot lot, you could only go 50-foot wide with the dwelling. You'd have to go deeper instead of wider. What? Oh, 8 foot for the side yard, and but 25 in the front? So, and that's from the right-of-way marker, not the street. Correct. So you gotta be 25, so if you've got 125, you've got about 100 feet well, where your house can okay. start. Larry, you're you're so getting Larry, too deep into where yeah. we're at. Yeah. Do is, you mind if Bart well can have a chance at. to come out? And what? Say, I He's said, do you mind fine. if... <laughs> no. Okay, okay. Do you mind uh, if Barb can come up and say what she wants to say you? know what, um, would you guys be willing to set up something and come out there because the aerial maps are I realize you know that the other thing of what I was curious what does it cost to have lots laid out because these are not plotted out well Larry you know what why don't you wait until they mark it okay with, their, with the paint and stuff and then we'll all well, have we'll just a mark it better up. idea yeah, and what's and that's something I want everybody out there in TV land to listen to it's not the money from the sale of the lot it's the house being built there so we get taxes every year. Families living there so they can go to school. 
So I guess that's something you got to think past just twenty-five thousand or ten thousand dollars for the lot. You know what? If we can get somebody to move in there and help pay taxes, I, I guess I have the same thing across the street for me, and I've given some long, hard thought. And if it helps the city, I'm okay with that. I understand that, but you also have to look at proportional. You've got a huge area in that Sebastian Warner Park that is very close to the very east side of town. We are, from there, we're a mile and a half away. But we're not saying we're going to get rid of the park, Larry. Right, but, but if you take away a lot of the property, I mean, people are, the kids are going to not really use it. It's well, not going to be usable because there's so much unusable property. Um, I I, okay, everybody so. I've talked to, the one last thing I want to say, everybody I've talked to is against it. We elect people, and we would certainly hope that you would understand that this is something that's important to our neighborhood that we are going to lose. We're, we're a railroad crossing away from any other parts. How many times are all three of them blocked? even you know yep. that's something to consider we, and we are considering all of that it's like as like i said this whole thing was not i mean we didn't right. want to stir up anything and we're not selling anything we're just we were just talking about it ourselves like what we right. can do is what we're doing but so the first wait until you see that put out mm -hmm. there and and see what else we come up with with other well, what we come up with yeah i think there's Plenty of other property, and it's not and like this a is city gonna be that our first is owned discussion. by the city that could be developed, and you've got infrastructure close by. Okay, okay. thank Thanks, you. you got... Arb, do you want to say something? No. <laughs> but she's up. Yeah, I am. I'm Barb Johnson. I live in Greentown. Those that know me, I'm pretty quiet and don't say too much. But here we go. What? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, we've done this before. Back in the 1990s, I think it was, Mr. Rocky wanted to build a place out in Greentown, and we all petitioned. At that time, the council agreed with us. I remember my sister-in-law saying, can we have this in writing so we never have to go through this again? Well, thanks to Diane, we did look for that. Well, we couldn't find that where it was, if it had ever been anything more done with that. I was hoping it was, but. Um, okay, and if they got to have so many feet in the street, from the street, then they're going to be pretty, I think, close to the playground equipment, you know. And and Greentown has been, I think you had commented, it's pretty quiet or unknown area or something, and it is. The last thing I ever asked for out there was a new playground equipment, and we got it, and we're very grateful, and it gets used. And then I had talked to Shane about the bas or the baseball back thing that you guys talk about removing, and I had said we don't softball is not as popular anymore. It was when we were younger out there, of course, but. To put in a sand volleyball. All you got to do is dig a hole, put the sand in, and they got nets. And we had a lot of people out there. Our one neighbor drags out the big wheels and puts up his own net when they have a family reunion out there. I don't know. Somebody said we could go to the ball diamond at the school and play baseball. I don't know if we can go on that land, can we? It's locked up. Oh. If you guys call it, it's locked up. I don't up. know. I, I went out, walked out there, just walked around uh, like a year can, ago. There. It's locked up. Let Barb finish here. Hi, Jan. <laughs> Hi, Barb. <laughs> um, and, and most of the people out there do not want that changed at all. They said that's why they built out there. It's open. It's nice. And then I had suggested a shelter. And I think even at one time Shane had said he could probably maybe get trees from the Swift Lake area to put out there. We get people when there's baseball going out to school, there's track meets, anything going out to school, the families come over to the park with their little kids and they sit. And then you are in the hot sun, yeah. you know. And I said, I don't know if you got any plans or ideas on what I could do to get that going. I sure would appreciate that too. Well, I think. But go ahead, Jerry. No, I just think what what we need to do is oh. I mean, right now we are still in the very infant stages. Yep. A couple of good things that have come out of this is valid concerns yep. that we need we need to address. Doesn't mean we're going to meet all your your concerns or anything. But we at least know what they are okay. so we can try to address them mm -hmm. we can try to do what we had approved all we approved was to look at how we could develop these two areas and out at greenwood 
I think I made it very clear in my statement. It is we are not getting rid of the no park. Oh, I, no, I, I understand. If we need I understand to maybe that. even improve the park by able to be selling these lots, if we look at what would be because we don't want you guys as neighbors to be unwelcoming to new people. And you know how that there. Greentown area is. It's tough. No, I'm just I'm saying kidding. if you guys feel so strongly about yep. not doing it, yep. who's going to want to buy the lot? Yes. I wouldn't want to build a brand new house in a community where I felt I was not being welcomed. Sure. Yeah. And so we want to make it where it's a welcoming place because I know you guys are welcoming out there. I mean, my brother lived out there. He yeah. doesn't anymore. Maybe that's why. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Took but, care of that guy, didn't we? <laughs> but we need to look because with the park, if water is an issue, or it was is going to be an issue, it's an issue now with the kids there because that's yep. where the park, the equipment is, yep. is on the, that the older the, the older park equipment is still in the box. And so maybe yep. we can improve the park half along with the lot, the two lot half. Let's just say. Yeah. So when you to guys make are going to win win. Okay, when you guys are going to go out and do your marking of the land out there in Greentown with your flags or your tape or whatever, are you going to do it in the other places too then? Like the Sebastian Park and so that, that'll places. all be marked yeah. so everybody yeah. can we see can, that We too. can do that. Um, and you know, I know the city does have other lots for sale and somebody commented to me, I won't mention any names, but Jeff um, had said, would you want to build a $400,000 home in amongst $200,000 homes? I don't think Greentown's got a $200,000 home. You know, you're still in the that category. There's some nice houses. Oh yeah, but I didn't say anything. You might be nice surprised. <laughs> Just wait. Yeah. Really and there are, yeah. and we're losing, right we're losing now. another neighbor out there now. They're moving because of the taxes are so high. They are selling their house and going. So all the more reason why we need to look at getting more people to move to town. I'm wondering that's only going to help. If I'm just throwing this out, and I think when we get it measured, we'll, things will become much more crystal clear as to how big it is. And I've I've walked out there too, and so I have a a better feel for how close the equipment is on that yeah. one side. Yeah. Um, those improvements would be really great. Not only don't we have any money to develop land, we don't have much to build additional park equipment. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering if as these requirements for square footage that are necessary for a lot, if we can't get two, if we can get one lot and with the proceeds from that it was used for that park for and i'm not promising anything but for a structure or something would that be an appeasement or you would prefer not to see anything on either of those lots yeah i'm just I, asking yeah, you yeah, your opinion yeah I, no i wouldn't want to see anything on the lots okay, yeah and you know like i said if you go out and talk to the neighbors out there you'll find out their opinions the one especially the ones that are really are more in I could do the whole Greentown for if you wanted me to, you know, and ask their opinion, but the ones directly around that park yeah. are not for it at all. And you I know. guess I've never been able to get a straight answer as to what is the main issue. Because when they say, well, because we, we need that park and everything, we have said we will keep the park. I, 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 I'm still trying to wrap my arms off around why there's such a big... I think what the connection to that is area. the only flat spot yep. that doesn't have yep. playground mm -hmm. equipment on it. And see, old equipment and new equipment. To the east or to the west is a big ditch. That's not a play area. You can't play. Mm -hmm. You can so swim in ice cream, but you can't play. That's wide open is exactly what we're looking for. And see, no and that's where plan. when I had, after we got the park equipment out there, and that's when I had, that would be from the sand volleyball up there, you know. And we have a lot of people that come out and play volleyball out there with that net. But I didn't think it would cost so much, you know, for the city to put a, dig a hole and put sand in there, but. One of the things that the council, I want the council to understand is, is that we have exactly $6,000 in our park maintenance fund that we spend on a yearly basis. So even if it's $3,000, that's half of our budget for a year. So it's not a lot of money, but we don't actually spend a lot of money on park maintenance. The only thing we have programmed this year is, is uh, we're going to replace some lights over at, uh, at the, the Lions, uh, 
no, the lion, not the Lions Park. The well, it is the Lions Park where they redid the shelter over there, and they do the horseshoes, you know, league on Monday nights and stuff like that. And so it's really hard to see. And that's a park that's being used with a specific activity, and and that's going to spend a third of our budget. And so um, it does not cost that much. You're right, but it is something we would need to plan for because we just don't have a lot of money that we put into that currently. Well, let's. let's Get it marked out, and yeah. we can yeah. get out there and get a look yeah. at it. And well, like, I was, I was shocked when I saw the meeting. All of a sudden, you guys passed this thing to, you know, do the resolution, go out and take care of this. I thought, when did this come up again? You know, because, like I said, we did this in the '90s, and yeah. you know, so it's like you just got to keep us informed. Yes. Better I than agree. what was done. You know, I, that was a shock. Yeah, you know? I said I called that on my behalf. That yeah. we didn't. Well, thank you. We need to get a little more information out. I, I think I told And you Larry, know, it is an ideal place. That's why we live out there. You I know? think I told Larry that, talked with him today, that so often government entities like the city or the state or the county, people always say, you guys move so slow. How come it takes you forever to do this? How come it takes so many steps? How come there's so many hoops? And the one time that we moved pretty quickly, <laughs> You got it. <laughs> we we, we got stepped banged. on our shoelace. So <laughs> yep, okay. I've, um, note to for note the future. Yourself. Yes. Thanks, Tom. Thanks, you guys. Yep. Thanks, you guys. Thank you, for Larry. Thanks for everything. Yep. You're ready to move on? Well, no. Um, I, I think before we move, move on, I think we need to have a clear plan as to is it going to be marked out by the end of the week? We can mark it out this week. We'll go. We'll go out and we'll mark uh, that as well as uh, something out at some ideas out at uh, Sebastian Park by the end of the week. Uh, and I think we need to look at this Warner Park too. That she's up. Uh, we can move the swing sets over to the other. Park. We we can mark we can mark it's that. Only half a block away. We can do that too. We can do all of that. I don't I think, think we it, should. I, and we have to move, change our resolution. Well, no, we don't because it's it oh, because Warner Park is not Sebastian. That's correct. You're 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 correct. We took it out of the. You're right. Revolution. We can't do Warner Park. We can only do Sebastian. Well, we well, think I, of that as Sebastian, but it's not. It's actually a different it's, park. Well, I think we need to move it back in. Then. Well, I, you know, in all fairness, we probably should look at them all just so. I, I let me let me let me let us do this one thing at a time. Let's just why don't we mark out Sebastian and we'll mark out. We'll mark out uh, um, Greenwood Park, and then we'll see where we're at. It's and if you guys want in, third hornet's nest in this right now. Let's deal with the two that we're already yeah. having a little bit of a yep. disagreement. That's on. my problem. That is my problem. Is that <clears throat> when we make these tough decisions, I think we need more information, but we also need to be fair. And I'm not saying anything to upset you or. But we we looked at three parks and we took one of them completely off the list because you had an issue with it. No, because no, there's no, equipment it was, there. It was you said you had an issue with it and we mm -hmm. said, Oh, maybe we should take that off. And I'm not saying we shouldn't have, but I'm just saying we cannot as a council take one off because one of us has an issue and I'm not sure. not address than a whole group of people that have an issue. It's harder to go back and say, oh, we're not, we're going to go ahead and do your part. But it's this not one my that, part. I want to no, no, clarify. No, not your part. I made them. it very clear to everybody the reason I thought that piece of property was different than the other two is because there was already park equipment on there that we were going to have to then address moving and everything. I, but I, I totally wanted understand. us to go with the two that had no park equipment that was going to be affected. But the issue is Don't still say it was because it's I, me. No. I agreed I agreed with Jerry. It was hardly. still the issue of making a decision. People voted how they wanted to vote, Tom. I looking back going, it's <laughs> tough for us now. To but go it's to the always public tough. And say, it is, and it's even tougher when we make that kind of a decision. Not when there's a reason that it's different I, than the other two. We've already it's just said that that park equipment that's that, sitting okay, well, pretty dated. So here's my question, and that's that aside. At what point in time do we, as a council, who have kind of the only ones representing 
the entire community the responsibility to make tough decisions. And I think this is going to be one of them that we're going to have to look and say for the good of the community, there are going to probably be some people upset at every one of these parts. Mm -hmm. So how do we make that decision? And I think you're right. It, one of those decisions could be because this is going to take less money to develop this lot or that there's somebody that's more interested in another area. But nonetheless, I think it's tough when we weigh in and look and say, you know, these individuals are upset. Yeah, I, I feel badly about that. But we may wind up having to make some decisions that people are upset about. And I think we need to be ready for that or decide at what point in time do we say, no, there's too many people upset about that. We're walking away. I think that's the hard decision to be made. But I think another thing that's very hard is when we make a decision as this council and we walk out with the decision, people got to vote and everything, and then as soon as we're out the door, as soon as somebody talks to somebody and they're upset or whatever, people are wanting to reverse their votes and everything. We can't move forward as a city if we can't even stand together with our decisions once a vote is made. And that has happened time and time again. We make a vote and then all of a sudden, oh, maybe we need to rethink that. Maybe we need to redo that. I'm tired of that. We need to stick, when we make a vote, you vote the way you want. I, we do not have to have unanimous votes. No, they can be don't. all 4-3, four, 4-3, three, 4-3. Four, three, four, three. But when it's 4-3, three, the three that did not get their way have to walk out with their heads held high. People can see you voted differently, but that wasn't the decision of the council. And we need to walk out of here as a council and still function as a council out in the community and back the decision. People are gonna know you didn't vote for something and you can even say, I didn't vote that way, but the council decided a, a majority vote and now we're gonna move forward that way. I think my issue on this one is I don't, I think we voted without enough information Agreed. to really do a fair vote. And I'm not going back on I'm just saying I think we voted too quickly and what we did as an ordinance was more far reaching than it should have been. I think what we should have voted on is bring us all the information about all three parts, then we'll make a decision. But we narrowed it down and I, I'm just saying now I'm looking back at it going I don't know that we should have narrowed anything out. And I think we need that information before we move forward. So and, I, and I agree 100% with that. I don't know if I would change my vote the way it is. But no, I don't know. I think I, I needed, I should have asked for more information before I did that. But that's what we voted for to find more to find information. Find to get the information. Yeah, the ordinance is a little far, far reaching. It but actually that's authorized we, them to do the, you know, I mean, we should have, it should have said authorized to inquire about the locations and, and have some. Of it's, it's over now. It's over. It's, but I, I won't be as quick next time. Okay, so how are we going to move on forward from here? The only, the only mark consensus this? direction that I get is, is that we're going to try to mark some places oh, in some mark. of these parks to see what they look like and give people a chance to look at it. And then you can decide, we'll get that done, you know, this week, and then we'll have another council meeting in a couple weeks, and if you want to talk about it more at that point, you know, we can do that. Let's let our staff do their research like we asked them to do in our last resolution. Yep. <clears throat> so we'll do that. We'll okay. mark it. Is everybody ready to move on? Sure. I am. Yep. Do you want to give your report? Sure. Speaking of managing resources, I just wanted to, to give you a little bit of a preview because, you know, we have a budget meeting coming up on June 5th, and I know there's this discussion about the community center next week, too, at the same time. Um, there's still some unknowns, you know, at this point, but, but I wanted you to start thinking about, okay, you know, what, what kinds of things are important to me in the next 10 years? One of the things that's driving this discussion about how much money we might have, you know, over this period of time is that we're finishing up the street project this year. Um, and as you can tell, we talked about Greenwood and Front Street, but 
you know, if you drive over there on 1st Street East and 2nd Street East, along Morgan, I mean, those streets are practically dirt as it is anyway. And the water and sewer is so close to the surface over there, a lot of times it freezes in the winter because when they put it in 100 years ago, they didn't put it in as deep as they should have. So we've got to think about when that next phase of the street project is going to be. And so really planning ahead and thinking, which is what I think Barb Johnson said we should be doing, is exactly it. I want to give you a little bit of a preview of what, what that might look like so you can start thinking about it. Um, so I'm going to pull this in front of me here. Um, Jan, I'm sorry to do this to you. I'm going to see if I can share my sc screen so that you can uh, see it. I don't, I don't know how to do that, Jan. I'm sorry. Don't worry about it. But this is the new version of the spreadsheet that we've seen for a couple of years. And I'm going to show you a couple of things that are really important. The first one is this yellow line down here. This is what you would call change in net position. So after we paid all of our debt, after we paid all of our operations and provided services to the city, how much money do we have left to invest in the city? Can we make it bigger? Can you make that this big? <laughs> yeah, I can. You want to make it almost, bigger? I can't see that. You want to make it bigger? How's that? No, too small. Um, I can share with you at some point. It doesn't, it's not, it doesn't usually matter. Um, at this point. Um, the most important thing is when you get down here to the bottom, this year in the 2023 budget, we're anticipating that we're spending down about $280,000 in fund balance, and that's because of that 2016 B bond, remember? That was like 240 of it. So all that money is mostly going into the pools. So that's why that number is negative. That's intentional, we know that. The number that I'm anticipating at the moment, based on certain assumptions, is maybe $175,000 that you might have available in 2024. How do you get that? Well, there's a set of assumptions down here at the bottom that I can change. So if you wanted to ask me a question, gee, Eric, what if we only had a 3% increase in the tax levy in 2024? How much money do you think we would have? Right now, this is a 7% increase in the tax levy. So if I change that to 3%, um, and hang on just a second. No. It's not going to work, probably because I'm not on the network. Um, well, would this be something that we should look at at the budget meeting? as to try to squint our eyes. Yeah, I, I, I'm going to be honest with you why I'm, why I'm bringing this up now is because if we're going to have a meeting about the community center on the 18th um, and at this point they're at $700,000 and you want them to raise $850,000, that money's got to come from somewhere. And we have a lot of things that we're potentially looking at spending in 2024. 20, uh, we need a new police car, for example. We're always going to need more fire equipment and things like that. Um, and so I want you to see what all of the needs are and how that affects the actual money. Because if it's only $700,000 and we needed to get to eight fifty, dollars or maybe a little more for that just for contingency purposes, that money's got to come from somewhere and that means we can't spend it on something else. Well, That's the poor reason why I'm bringing this up tonight. I, I didn't think that they were or anybody was expecting to spend more city money on it. Well, I, I I think that I think there's I think that's going to be the ask. I think that's going to be the ask. I think we'll find out at the 18th. Yeah. So, so what I but I, what I want you to think about is how much resources you know do we really have to work with here? I, it, it's it's been said before, but I'm gonna I'm gonna repeat it again. We know that kind of our debt service is peaking in 23, 24, and 25. That's it gets a little better than you know as time goes on, and that that helps us. Um, and what I don't think people know maybe as much is that the total amount of money that the city owes is 27.7 million dollars. That is 13 thousand dollars for every person in town. And so we, we talk about in terms of how much we pay each money, 
each 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 year on that debt service but 27 almost 28 million dollars is a lot of money um, and so I want you to think about that in the next few weeks okay what are the things that are really important to me you know improvements at the VMC community center improvements in parks police cars you know things like that because we won't have the resources to do it all so think about in your mind what's important and this is your decision at the end of the day I mean my job is basically just to say okay you know here are the things that you can do and here are the resources that you might have to do those things and if you want to do them this is what it's going to take um, and but I really wanted to start introducing this because this is going to be a key discussion you know happening in the in the next month is the uh, for lack of a better term the COVID money at the at the county is that has that been figured into anything yet or would that be something we would talk about for 20 that's or that's some potential about? money that's out there and I think we would have to talk about how you know what requests we would make for that I don't have that in here because I like to be conservative on it I mean, it, this also doesn't include any grants we don't have, for example. And I would include that in but the I mean, same that's number. money we know sits there. I, I guess I would like us to think about that for 2024. Yep. For whatever it is used, it'd be nice to get it while it's still maybe there. I, I totally agree. <laughs> I totally agree. I think I think that's something that we need to have a discussion about in this in this meeting. Um, and there's a lot of things, you know, that are on this list. I mean, we talked about the airport hangars, maybe, you know, do we want to expand that to eight? Um, there's, there's a lot of different choices that you have here. And so it kind of becomes an a la carte menu to a certain extent. So I, I, I I'm just asking, I'm just kind of intro starting to introduce this because I don't think it does us any good not to think ahead, you know? I want you to start thinking about what's really important to me that we want to spend in the next five to ten years. What's really important to the community as a whole. Um, I think this is good because I think it's something that we were asking the last year or so when we were setting our priorities. Right. It's hard to set priorities where, okay, if you set this as a priority and it's a $300,000 cost, which will take up everything, but if I knew we could get B, C, and D done for that same amount, I might reprioritize if that. I, I know you. You're upset with me because I didn't give you the number first. Yeah. But I. Now but I. This is I had closer. a. I had a reason for that though. I'm this gonna be. I, I'm gonna be really honest with you because because I I I had a feeling that we probably could do just about everything on the list, which we did. I think we got like five the top five priorities done this year, and so I was trying to. Um, how should we say under promise and over deliver <laughs> but but I'm about out of magic tricks I you know, know with the money because we don't we don't have as much we don't have as much to work with as we did this year yep. um, and um, it's going to get a little easier in 26 27 28 at, but at what point when we're getting ready for this I would like when we're planning far enough ahead yeah we've already mentioned you know first three and some of these yep others, but we're not done with Yep. No, we're not. So, it would be good to know at what point in time are we going to take the next bite and the next bite. That's that's exactly what we're trying to answer. And the other thing I added is we've always looked at the we've looked at the general fund kind of like this in the last couple of years, but I also included the water fund and the sewer fund and things like that. One of the things that Shane and I have been having some discussions on is okay. Is it possible with the revenues we have to maybe cash flow a little bit of these improvements? Maybe we do three, four blocks as opposed to borrowing money from rural development to do it, you know, and having to pay that debt and that interest over time. So we kind of do a little bit of pay, over, pay as we go. Could we potentially do that? We're trying to figure, figure that piece of it out as well. Can we bite off a piece of this now? Because the other benefit to that too is, is that my God, First Street East and Second Street East is so bad. If we have to wait another ten years, I I I, I don't I don't know how. You know I don't know how we do that, and we can't we can't do that. So, so yes, I think that's a really good point. That's a lot of what this what this is why we want to look out so far is so we can start planning ahead a little bit and managing our resources so that we know 
what money we're going to have. Yeah. So think about that. Um, any other questions about that? Well, when we learn about our LGA from the state, that yeah. doesn't make a, I, I mean, a big difference maker. Yep. Which direction we go. I think we'll get a bump. Maybe not as much as what the League of Minnesota Cities asked for. What's the potential that they're going to get what they asked for? Is that done? I think that, you know, they had asked for $150 million put into it. I think the two versions are between 50 and $100 million. So I don't think we're going to get everything. So we're looking at probably a 5 to 10% increase maybe next year. Not chump change by any means. No, we get yeah, almost a million dollars. But there's a big difference between 5 and 10%. Yeah. So you'll send this to us to be able to look at? I that's mean, a good, that's a good question. I think I probably could put a version out there for you. This spreadsheet has like a zillion tabs on a whole bunch of other stuff, but I could create a version, I think, that I can give to you that maybe you could play with if you wanted to. Yeah, I could if you want to do that. Maybe for financial people like Tom who are interested. Yeah, I could do that. I'm just a dumb nurse, but I'd like the numbers. Oh, you're not a dumb nurse. I'm sure you like the numbers. But I, I appreciate the self-effacing comment. Thank you. You're welcome. Is there anything uh, else on my report? I, I, I was late on my report. There isn't a lot that has changed in the last couple of weeks. The street projects are going. I sent you an update about that. You can see that they already started milling Center are Street. They, are they going to... At one point in time, they were going to start the south side. Are they still going to do that? Yeah, they're, they're still going to do that. They decided they're going to mill the whole thing first, and then they're going to start actually digging on the south okay. side. Because it looked like they milled the north part first. And then I, I, thought, I asked Shane the, the same part? question this morning. I said, Shane, I thought they were starting on the south <laughs> end. Oh, well, they're going to mill the whole thing. Okay, I get that. They're going to mill the whole thing first, but yeah. then start digging on the south end. Yeah. And it, yeah. at one point in time, and I think it's still that way, it looks like every single intersection is posted like it's closed and you see a lot of trepidation and I had approaching and right I had some concerns about that I drove over that myself today the same way and I had talked to Jerry earlier just about the whole idea of how do we post it correctly so they get to the hospital um, and I, so I think we need to address some of those issues do you have any do you have an update on that so <clears throat> I could touch on some of this the Digging will actually start on Emory, and they're going to work south from there. Because that's the mantle they need to hook to, and they usually start on the bottom side of the hill and work up. So they're going to do the south end, but it's from Emory to South Street. It's quite a little while. And then they'll, once they get that done, then they're going to go to the north and go from Highway 14 south. So Emory, to Emory all the way to the ambulance garage. Correct. Yep. Well, that cuts virtually everything off. Not everything, but most of it. Can we get there? Well, no. I mean, <coughs> left with north or whatever that is through that neighborhood and north, and uh, right? you'll have Hollett Street through there. Oh, Hollett. Okay. And then you might have Emory too. They have to go into the intersection. I don't know <coughs> to what extent they'll have it dug up. Okay. So it's a little unknown yet, but uh, why we likely. Just, why are we just sending everything up to Highway 14 and around to get to the hospital? Oh. I mean that because if we're going to close this one day and that the next day or whatever, it's going to confuse I, people. I think, I think we should. Right. And I, I have some concerns about that that we didn't do a good job of kind of changing that signage and things like that. Uh, so I think we need to have a conversation with them tomorrow about that. We don't want people going through residential if they're trying to get to the ER from the lake. Well, even, it's even it's better it's just right. like I said, from, gonna, from the school. Yes. Just keep coming. Yep. And they're going to see that great big placard closed. And they're, I mean, even though there's space between it, they're going to be. There's, yeah, there's a few different problems with, with that. You know, for our fire and ambulance, our route is South Street. Um, take South Street to Fourth Street, and then to the highway or wherever we need to go if we're going north. You know, so they're going to follow that path. That's kind of known by everybody now. The problem with if you open one intersection. People are going to start driving on Center Street, and something bad's going to happen yeah. there. And also, as a patient in the ambulance, I wouldn't want to be driving down Center Street at all, anyway, or crossing it, because you know they got temporary water crossings. They have, you know, the streets ground up. 
they're chunking out concrete um, tomorrow. They're starting that. So they got two days of chunking out concrete. Cause there's concrete under the asphalt basically from Rowan to Highway 14. So they're not gonna take all that out right away, but for sure to Emory, the way, the way it sounded this morning, so. So when will the hospital signs get replaced? I'll talk to them on that. Um, it really that should needs be part before of their detour. the weekend because with fishing opener and everything, yeah. people don't know when they're at the lake. They they have no clue when they're coming in here. You know, it was a local person that brought the one person in, so they knew now. Once they tried it, they just went yeah. right to 14 and went around. But you get people that have nobody local with them. They're not going to have any clue. No how to come there. So, I mean, we really need to get that done sooner than later. Yeah, I'll talk to them on the hospital signage. So, you know, they kind of, the detours set up in the last week. I went through it again this morning to check and make sure everything was in place before they built. But, um, I don't know if that's something they thought of really as far as the contractors go about moving the hospital sign but well, i know but it's been brought up at a couple meetings and i, I know we did four street east they didn't move it then i'd remind them that too so but we'll uh we'll get that on their list tomorrow anything else on the project so what's the what is the next step i saw the thing that eric sent out for I don't know, the phase two, three, whatever. The one that's the roller coaster, we're waiting for the testing company to... Yep. Um, I don't have the map handy. Um, I didn't see that one come out yet um, from Kyle, but they're going to do some more testing in some of the worst areas again and see how things are looking compared to last fall. From your vantage point, when you drive, I mean, did it get worse about the same in a few spots i would say it got worse um some of them are getting tore out because you know they gotta raise all the iron up around the manholes and that so those are gonna be bad anyway because things settle different around the manholes and they didn't really plan on that being permanent because they're gonna have to dig it back up so you know some of those issues were there you know they're gonna take care of themselves once they raise all that up um, but as far as the testing goes, I say it, they haven't come up with a, a plan yet, so I don't. I'm not sure on that part. Let me let me interject here. Here's here's what the plan is generally, and we we did a walkthrough with the contractor and the engineer Shane and I did last week. Um, our plan is to do the testing, come back with a specific plan about how we're going to address the issue, and then bring it back to you on the 22nd, uh, two weeks from tonight, uh, for you to review. Just like we did kind of last, you know, August, where we had kind of specific, this is what we're going to do kind of thing. Mm -hmm. You know, have you approve it so the contractor knows what to expect. Um, and then, you know, kind of move forward. Right now, they're still under a work stoppage, um, which we, you know, we did that last, you know, last fall. Um, and so I know they're anxious to, 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 to move forward, but we obviously don't want to do that until we know exactly what it is that they're going to do. So I think we'll have a more detailed answer and it had intended to have a more detailed answer for you on the 22nd. We didn't feel like we could get the testing and a good answer to the problem before today, which is why it's the 22nd, ultimately. And the only question I have, too, is when's it safe to start doing potholes? We pass the point where we can begin as soon as we get, can get asphalt. Is that what we're waiting on? Okay. It's not late. available or you don't have time? Mid to late May, usually when they get the plant opening up. The way it sounds are, sound like they might start firing it up. And usually there's issues the first week. Can we get though, any kind of a hot mix or any kind of even gravel and a few of them? I mean, there's one down here like Twin Circle. We have a cone that's about half buried. That's part of R&G's work. Oh, it is. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I think they, they put the cone in there, but that's all going to get dug up here in the next week, so it's probably not worth us putting asphalt in at this point. But, yeah, that's really rough through there, but that's, uh, they got that all painted out as a problem area too. So, um, they did, ISG did some painting on several areas of 3A2 last week. So. so if we drive through there or walk through there, we'll see some paint to 
Yeah, yeah. it was there earlier today, so yeah. Nice. So. In South Streets County, right? That's County yeah. Road. That's correct. So they'll be South doing, Street, you said? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. They'll be doing pothole fixing. Or yeah, do we, we don't do any do street maintenance on South Street. Do we need to stir the pot to get them? <laughs> We can dressing our roads. Yeah, so there's another versus bad one. Other on. county roads. If we're not making the noise, are we going to be a possibly? But um, there's another one on uh, Highline Road and Highway 14 too. That's a doozy. So um, yeah, I can bring it up the chain. I just think we need to make some noise, or we won't. We'll be last on their list. Yeah, they usually make their rounds, but. I think with Center Street out, I don't know how much I'll be looking at it, so I can put the reminder out. So. Okay, thank you. Yep. Well, you know, from not being on the side of town where Center Street is, and holy jeepers, I didn't realize how bad that was. Yeah, tell me about it. That's where I live. Whoa. Well. Yep, it's a toughie. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's that's what I have as far as a report on. Those are kind of the big things that are happening at the at the minute. Um, and the audit. The other thing I want to add is that the auditors are here again uh, this week, and so we're kind of working through that at the moment. And um, you know, they're new auditors, and so we'll see. We may have to ask for an extension. I think I indicated to you before, just because of the circumstances of being a new auditor, and they kind of added us on at the last minute. So we'll find out, see where they're at. Any other questions for us? Yes, ma'am. Are they going to, are you, whoever going to mark out yet on Center Street for us to see visually again? Yeah, I had a conversation with Kyle Renicky about that in terms of, you know, where the lanes are going to be. Um, they were marked at one point, but I didn't anticipate that they were going to, I didn't know they were doing the, the milling. Um, and then because I was out sick last week, I didn't get that meeting scheduled, but, but I talked to Kyle um, about scheduling something for next week and so we'll schedule something where we have some lines you know out there so people kind of see where the parking is going to be where the road's going to be where the bike lane is going to be that kind of thing so look at the road and the yep where the sidewalk's going to be that kind of stuff yeah so you can visualize it yeah that'll happen next week but i don't have a specific date yet Shoot us a message so we know it's done and it don't I will. I will disappear before we get to see. I'll I'll do that <laughs> this time. I, yeah. I I got I got a little uh, behind the eight ball last week, so. Um. <clears throat> all right. Um. That's all I have. Uh. We just have one resolution. If you want to move to that. Yeah. Let's move to that. Okay. So we've been talking about this for a little while, but basically this is an approval of the lease agreement for the VMC and the library. Uh, not just the VMC for the school. Um, you know, the school is doing a bunch of work out there and they are not able to use this high school and the middle school for the summer. Um, and so we've got a lease agreement here. Chad Anderson has reviewed it. He's planning on bringing this to his school board a week from tonight when they meet. Um, basically what it represents um, is one, uh, there'll be summer school, high school classes at the library mezzanine, kind of that second halfway level um, for, for, I think, six weeks. Um, they'll be using the second floor of the VMC over there the, above the police station for office space uh, this summer. And we actually just repainted that entire area and have cleaned it out. And so it's, it's in about as good a shape as it's been in years. Um, in July, they do a program for the younger kids called Camp S'mores, and they'll be in the gym during that time. Um, they're also going to use the VMC for their summer nutrition program that they normally do out of the schools. Um, there'll be camps and all of that stuff like normal, but that's covered under the other agreement, so that's, this agreement doesn't cover that. In consideration for that, the city is going to get up to two hours of janitorial services a day. A day? A day. Okay. Um, and uh, $5,000 in cash rent for each summer. So 5,000 this summer, 5,000 next summer. Um, you know, the value of that from a rental standpoint is probably about $13,000 we figured out based on our published rates, but giving them a discount because it's the school plus the fact that they're using a lot of the space, you know, kind of good as a group discount. We think that's a reasonable number. Um, 
there is one slight difference in the agreement um, compared to what you saw online. Um, the original agreement said the school should provide a minimum of two hours, and this says provide up to two hours. We don't think we actually need more than two hours, and so that was a request that the school uh, wanted, and I, I think that's perfectly fine. We're going to get about a couple hours. Um, and that's the only difference um, in, um, that's the only modification that I have compared to what, what you already saw. Um, and uh, Chad has, has seen this and you know, said it looks good with that one modification and uh, the school board will see it next week. With that, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Can we take, take that $5,000 or whatever and earmark it to sure. fix the bathrooms? So we get started. On I don't. I don't find think five thousand dollars will fix. It's not going to do anything, but at least we got a fund started, kind of like the community center. We got a fund started, so let's get a fund going. We can do that. Uh, we heard that there was tree roots or something affecting the sewer line. Is yes. I've not heard no plan to rectify that. Yeah, there is a plan to rectify that. That's going to happen this summer. So well, yeah. So Shane and his guys in in June will be able to go in and replace that area of clay pipe as it comes out of the VMC into the street. And so that's going to be fixed this summer. We'll put PVC in there. And that's all exterior away from the building. That's all exterior away from the building. And so Shane can, his crew can do it. If it we're in the building, it will be a problem because we'd have to hire a plumber to do it. Because it's outside the building, we can do it ourselves. So that'll get fixed this summer. Okay. And is that, is that from the locker rooms, or not the locker room, from the, um, the bathrooms way on the west side yeah it includes the bathrooms as well as the locker rooms both they of them go into the same pipe the they both go the same pipe yeah nice. yep a tree will come out there. no we won't have to take the tree out um it's because uh we'll have to cut some of the roots out but i asked shane that question and he didn't think the tree would have to come out i'm I shouldn't make that promise 100% because I suppose once you go in, if you see something, that you might have to take it out. But the but our intent is not to take the tree out. We think we can leave the tree in and, and still have the, the sewer connection fixed. Does the school feel like the electrical services up the upstairs is going to be adequate? They've, they've toured all the facilities, yeah. And there, the school's been in today and last week actually kind of wiring it for their broadband needs as well. Oh, I see. You know, are they bringing in then their own infrastructure? I mean, their desks and chairs and all that yep. stuff. Okay. Yep, we're not providing any of that. There's yeah. Money. We'll provide some tables and chairs and things like that for some of the things that they need for, like, the nutrition program, but we're not bringing in any office. We don't have any office equipment for that. Where, where are they envisioning serving the food? And, uh, it, it's a good question. I, I think we're talking about... We had a discussion about that when we met with them a week or so ago, and I think the thinking was, you know, actually in the vent, in the VMC, maybe off to the side, you know, not on the wood part, but on the concrete part. The other question was about, well, what about some of these other programs that we do, like maybe Bone Builders or the YMC program and stuff, and that will still be able to continue as well. Um, so we, we think we've got enough space to do all of that, so I don't think we're going to be losing any any programming either other than potentially there's a week or two at the end of July into August where they're going to refinish the floors and we can't have anybody in there at that particular time but but other than that I th we should be able to coexist yeah. yeah well it's nice we can help out the school district yep. And, yeah, yep. These facilities. yep I appreciate everybody and you know it's Bill's been Towers been really good about giving us a schedule, so we've got a full schedule of when everything's happening, and and uh, so you know this this agreement was drafted by Matt, and um, and, and so it's it's something that I feel good about, and um, it's ready for your adoption on this resolution, and then when the school board adopts, or assuming that the school board approves it next week, um, we'll be ready to roll. Well, Mayor, I would like to. Uh, make a motion that we adopt resolution 2023 approving a lease with Tracy Area Public Schools. Thank you. Do we have a second? Second. First and second. Any further discussion? Are we, at this point, do we need to earmark the money towards bathroom restoration then? or If, if you would like to make a, I don't know. if you would like to make an amendment, a friendly amendment to that, 
to, to and and um, and if everybody's okay with that, we can include that as part of the resolution that the money is earmarked towards fixing bathrooms. We could do that. I mean, it isn't going to go far, but at least we got a yep. little bit. We could do something with it. Yep. Yep. So, if the person making the motion could indicate that as part of their motion, and uh, if it's okay with a second, then then we can have a vote on that. I would amend the resolution in front of us, 2023-41, to designate the rental um, revenues that we receive from the school district for the express purpose of improving our uh, sewer uh, bathroom uh, um, outlets. Yeah. <laughs> I'm good on the second. All right. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Linda. Aye. Schultz. Aye. Dobson? Yes. Schmidt? Yes. Arvisu? Yes. yes. Teeks? Aye. And Mayor Coleman? Aye. That's all we have for you tonight, Mayor. Nobody else has anything else. Looking for a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Second. First. And all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Thank you, Jan. Aye.